Good evening, uh, coming to you tonight from the Light Church. Uh, we're doing this the social media way since we cannot meet in person. We're looking tonight at Matthew chapter 8, the passage, uh, verse 23 says, Now he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful? Why are you afraid, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be, that even the winds and the sea obey him? That's a good question. Who can this be, that the winds and the waves would obey him? This passage starts out with a trip, just a little trip, maybe similar. You older older generations might, remed, right, might remember Gilligan's Island, where they left port for a little three-hour cruise, and they wound up stranded stranded on a desert island. Made quite a successful TV series out of it. But they got into the boat following Jesus, and all of a sudden, there was a great tempest on uh, the Sea of Galilee, and the boat was tossed uh, back and forth, and it scared the disciples. But Jesus, he was taking a nap. He'd had a hard day preaching and teaching and healing and caring. And he'd gotten into a little alcove that is built into the stern of the boat where the nets were stored. And it said that he had gotten into there so he was out of the out of the wind and the waves. He had a little bit of shelter and he had fallen fast asleep. And you wonder how someone can sleep in the middle of a crashing thunder and lightning and, and waves and, and the boat just rolling and being pitched about but but he did he he was he was asleep his disciples were scared and they woke him up i want to talk just a little bit about fear and being afraid being frightened because we live in a society uh, right now where there are many things that we could be afraid of uh, we have the coronavirus going around uh, thousands have perished in the united states and a great number around the world we can be fearful of that. The oil and gas economy that Jack County is so dependent upon has crashed in the last few weeks. People are losing their jobs. We could be afraid of that. And there's nothing wrong with fear. Uh, anytime, for instance, we're walking in the pasture and you hear that unmistak unmistakable buzz of a rattlesnake and you get hit with that shot of adrenaline, uh, it's a good thing to be a little bit afraid of that. Uh, fear of the law and fear of the repercussions keeps us from driving too fast and from doing things that would get us in trouble with the authority. So fear is a good thing, but fear living in a constant state of fear is, is not good. That's not what we're called to do as believers. In 1 Timothy, uh, Paul writes that we are not given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of faith and of overcoming. So if you have a spirit of fear, that doesn't come from God. It doesn't come from above. It comes from the evil one. And <clears throat> so we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And we confess what we're afraid about. And we, we speak to God about that. And, and he can calm us and reassure us. But it's interesting that <clears throat> the word that Matthew uses for a great tempest in verse 22, suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea and the boat was tossed all about. In the Greek uh, language, just as in the English language, there are a number of words that are very similar uh, synonyms. For instance, this afternoon here in Jacksboro, we had a, a thunderstorm. Uh, there are squalls, there are windstorms, but the word that he used here is seismos. We know that as uh, when there's an earthquake, it's called a seismic event. So this was a, not just your run-of-the-mill storm. This was a huge storm. And the disciples, and interestingly enough, at least four of the disciples were fishermen by trade. Uh, it'd be one thing if I were out on the Sea of Galilee and a storm came up, and I'd never experienced that before, and I would rightfully 
be afraid. But these guys were veterans of being out in the open water, but they were so afraid. And they came and they came to Jesus and they woke him up. And he looked at them and he said, why are you afraid? And you think about, well, maybe that was a rhetorical question or maybe he was just joking like, uh, you know, two, two, two guys or gals at a swim meet, one asked the other, why are you wet? Well, they've, they've both been in the water. And they asked, they asked Jesus, uh, or Jesus asked them, why are you afraid? Uh, Jesus wasn't afraid. He knew that he was on mission. And he knew that a storm was not going to stop him from what the Father had sent him to do. And he had conveyed this mission uh, with his disciples and their association with him, their presence with him uh, should have allayed their fears, but it didn't. So he very, he very seriously asked them, why are you afraid? And to try and get to the root of their fear. And he rebuked them for having such little faith. I think so often as we go through the world today that we sometimes look at our, our fears, whether it's the fear of being laid off, or whether it's the fear of uh, running out of money, uh, the fear of growing old, the fear of being alone. There are so many things that we can be afraid of, but Jesus would come alongside us and say, very simply, why are you afraid? I remember when I was little, a little boy, um, we had a, a, an old heater. It was um, run off of natural gas. Back then it was called drip that ran from a long line to a well from our house down in the pasture. And this big old stove in the middle of the night, uh, it, it would sometimes make these weird noises because the gas pressure was not very good and sometimes it would kind of come on and off. And if I woke up in the middle of the night and I was thirsty and needed a glass of water so desperately, I'd have to go in the other room and, and get my dad and and say, I, 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 need a, I need a drink of water. And he told me, don't, you know, don't wake me up. Just go in there and, and, and get your own glass of water. But I was afraid of bears and I had nightmares where bears would come down off the mountain. And, and these were not normal bears. They were huge bears and they breathed fire. And <clears throat> I just knew in my little five and six year old mind that there was one of them in that in that room that was between me and the drink of water in the kitchen and so i would wake my dad and he would lead me through that that room the living room where this where this this dragon bear was safely into the kitchen and get me a glass of water and i would i would be there drinking it and and just look up at him uh kind of in awe and amazement and and think like the disciples said who is this man it has no fear of a fire-breathing bear. The disciples looked at Jesus that way. Who can this be that calms the wind and the wave? And we sing a song today that the wind and the waves still know his name. They know the name of Jesus. Jesus conquered all. He conquered death. He has conquered our fears. We just have to go to him in faith and in love and understand that he loves us with a passion and with a fatherly love that right now we can't understand. And he can shelter us and he will shelter us. And we can be honest with him about what we're feeling and what we're fearing. He won't ridicule us. He won't make fun of us. He won't ignore us. He will listen patiently. And oftentimes just the very act of unpacking our fears um, leads us to be calm. It lets us know that Jesus is the master of the storm and that he's bigger than any storm that might come into your life. Sometimes we need people that we can talk to. We need people to pray with us. And so I want to extend the invitation that I'll give you my phone number, 940-229-4352, that if you need anything, if you need someone to pray for you or with you, if you have questions, uh, send me a text and tell me what your name is and say, hey, can you give me a call or will you pray about this? 
if you're, I'm probably like you and that I get random phone calls from telemarketers. And so I don't usually answer the, the phone to a number that I don't know, but if you will just send me a text, 940-229-4352 and say, hey, Tab, will you pray with me or will you call me? I need to talk. Be glad to do that. Thank you and have a great, great blessed day.